Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I have a story for you tonight that's actually the beginning of another series. I think all of you will kind of like this series because it's going to touch on something that we haven't really touched on a whole bunch in this channel. One of them's going to be Freemasons, the other one's going to be a lot of uh, Eastern European folklore. And I'm not too sure how many of you are knowledgeable about such things, and if not, I strongly suggest you dive a little bit deeper. But till then, here's tonight's sponsor. Tonight's sponsor is once again Raid Shadow Legends, and everybody loves them because they love me enough to want to sponsor videos. Want to be the hero of your own fantasy? Well, enter the epic world of Teleria, where dark elves meet the Sacred Order, and the Banner Lords are in an endless war with the undead hordes. Collect, equip, train, and upgrade your team of heroes in order to start a journey of a lifetime. Raid Shadow Legends will take you to the world of dark fantasy and realism. Raid is free to play and available on both mobile and on PC. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a couple of shards here. I got two different blue shards. And uh, these are ones that I had to acquire through playing. They didn't give these to me. Looks like I got a lizard man. Uh, metal Shaper, and it's okay. It's a three-star hero, I guess. This boy, or lady, is more what I'm talking about. I prefer using Dark Elves and, honestly, four-star heroes and epic heroes. Uh, I'm trying to avoid using anything below a four-star hero now. Challenge yourself in ongoing tournaments. They're every few days, and you can compete against the entire raid community while fighting the Spider's Den, Ice Golem, and the Dragon. The game is absolutely free, and you can get it in the link in the description down below. Or if you go to the link in the description down below, or in the comment section, and you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver, two clan boss keys, 10 mystery shards, one free champion, who's the executioner, and all your treasure will be available here. The little hand is pointing. So good luck, everybody. As you can see, my name is Mr. Creepy Pfeivta. So I took Mr. Creepypasta, and you'll certainly see me at the top of all the tournament lists. Once again, a big thank you to Raid for sponsoring tonight's video, and on to tonight's story. Why would a man break the oath he took when he became a Freemason, you might ask? Well, things have gotten pretty scary before the lockdown, and I need to leave my testimonies somewhere for the world to know what is really happening. I'm sure that you have heard a lot of Conspiracies about Freemasons, how they rule the world. This one's actually true. Or how they have clear proof of the existence of extraterrestrial life, or how they or how they sacrifice goats in the dark and light of their temples for the one they worship blindly. And the one that I like the most is when they run naked in the forests as part of some deluded rituals. Most of these, of course, false claims thrown by the media into our faces just so that we can stay occupied with imbecile discussions. However, what I have to tell you is much worse. See, I've seen and I've heard things unimaginable, in some cases unbearable, for the human mind. I want to get into Masonic history, how and why it appeared, what, what was its initial purpose, and all those other things, because you can find that online, although some of it has been a little altered, just to make them look good. I'll start my story with the initiation ritual, what happened before and after that, how I was accepted, and the sheer terror that I went through in my first visit at the temple. I will not tell you where I'm from, because I'll easily be found out if I tell which Masonic Lodge I'm a part of. And from what country, although I'm located in the southern, eastern, central parts of Europe. For the time being, I'll tell you about the start of my journey, and if there are people here who are interested in hearing me, well, then I'll tell you more. For example, the story of when I ran across a rather odd version of the Bible in the crucifixion of Jesus, or the real story of the 27 Club, the actual ritual you have to perform when you want to have money, fame, and talent, and music, but you have to give a certain something in return to a certain someone. Or I could tell you about the moment when I was really scared, when a special guest was invited into our lodge to give a Masonic lecture about, well, I'll tell you some other time. The main reason I got into Freemasonry was because one of my teachers at the Academy of Sciences that I currently do research in is a Freemason. He took a liking to me and asked, of, after two years of gaining each other's trust, if I would like to be part of an organization who has the sole purpose of bettering the world and the individual. You gotta excuse me if some of this text sounds wrong, because English isn't really my main language, but I will try my best to feed your curiosities with the proper usage of such a beautiful language. I then asked him if this was an NGO or a research group so that I know whom I'm speaking to and what my conduct and behavior should be when I went there. He said directly, No, son. This is a Masonic Lodge I'm talking about. You'll learn new things, things that not everyone can learn or know because they must remain hidden to prying eyes. 
We are looking to bring in a few bright young people such as yourself because we're beginning to grow old and weary and we can't do our duties properly. I mean, son, look at me. I'm 92 years old. I could die tomorrow. I need someone to take my place. And who can that someone be other than my best student in this whole academy? Professor, thank you for the kind words. I have to say that you have my full attention and my curiosity is really big in this moment. But at the same time, I... I've heard throughout my life all the crazy stories about Freemasons, so I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about the fact that we're Satanists, or that we can talk to the devil, am I right? Or maybe we talk to the dead as well. Imagine if I could talk to Einstein right now, or to Madame Curie, or to Marie Curie, Nikolai Tesla, or Tartini, or Beethoven, all the greats of classical music. That would be wonderful. But it is impossible. Do I look like a Satanist to you? Do I look like a bad person? Or do I, do I sound crazy when I speak? Or do I pretend that I know the secrets of alchemy? No, son, I'm just a normal person. A man of science. Who happens to believe in God as well. Very well known in my field and very well respected. That's because of the 70 plus years of hard work and dedication I put in. Now what do you say, son? You want to find extraordinary knowledge. I pondered a bit and then exclaimed, All right, Professor, I accept your invitation for mainly two reasons. First one being that I have a lot of admiration and respect for you, and I'm really humbled by the fact that you see me as your successor. The other is that I always try to improve myself and learn new things. Son, you just made a life-changing decision. Someone will call you next week to ask you for your personal details, and they'll tell you everything about the meeting. Very good, Professor. See you next week. I went home without very much thinking about this, and and I went to my normal routine, reading, writing articles, publishing a few of them, finishing some work, the usual thing. The following week came, and I was called by a gentleman, and we met for a discussion. He told me to be in a certain place at exactly 3.33 p.m. the next day, no earlier or later than that. This was in 2015. I went there. I was greeted by my teacher. He took me upstairs to a tiled room where he placed a black cloth over my eyes, and then he took me to a dimly lit small room, also known as the, the Chamber of Reflection, where I stayed for an hour. However, this was not a normal Chamber of Reflection, nor did I reflect too much. It was only later that I found out that this lodge was one of the special lodges, only known by the elite Freemasonry, in the Grand Lodge of the country. In my country, there are only such lodges with nine members each. As I was sitting on the chair in the Chamber of Reflection, a small figure erected from a dark corner of the room. The upper body was that of a really ugly man with a very large beard. Black eyes, pointy nose and ears, very yellow teeth. What startled me was that he was standing on two legs that looked like they were his and not his at the same time because well because they were goat legs my quick judgment said it was just a costume for the theatrics of the initiation so i went along with it he asked me to follow three questions written on a piece of very old paper for which i had to answer yes in order to go on with the ritual one do you believe in the one and only true great architect of the universe yes two do you wish to receive his knowledge through our ancient ways? Yes. Three. Do you swear to serve the Freemasons for your whole life from here on out? Yes. Then he produced a small needle, punctured one of my fingers with it, and asked me to sign that piece of paper with my finger on what was a representation of the Eye of Providence drawn under those questions. I signed it. The little man exited the room, and five minutes later, my teacher came and took me to my next part of the initiation. I entered the temple again, blindfolded. I did some not-so-cool things like breaking stone with a hammer, drinking some sweet and sour liquids, I was half naked in my upper left part of my body with the chest and shoulder showing, and next, I felt something really cold. It's the tip of something metallic. I figured again this was part of the ritual, maybe a sword, I thought. All right, I said. I love theatrics. 
Then something really scary happened. The master of the lodge recited the following. Oh, he with many names, except your newest, humblest servant in our brotherhood. Our master who art in fiery light and who is free in spirit. Except this new apprentice within our ranks. Apprentice, say this three times with all of us. Hail, Jabalon. Hail, Jabalon. Hail, Jabalon. You are now reborn, apprentice. Forever through the square and compasses and our three eternal lights. At this point, my heart was pounding, and then they took the blindfold off, and what I saw was that everyone's swords were raised, making a circle around me with just a small opening. And then it happened. Out of a corner, someone came towards me, running through the opening, enraged and ready to attack me. It's clearly a gimmick, as this person was dressed like a goat with long horns. It stopped right in front of me, saw me shaking in fear, and a deep voice came from behind the mask, saying, Solavet, Kongalain, Luxit, Tenambre. Everyone chanted again, and I chanted with them. The figure went back to a corner. Everyone started clapping, and they started to shake my hand one by one, greeting me. Welcome, brother. Oh, brother, you are really scared. Don't worry, this is all part of the initiation. Welcome, brother. My teacher told me afterwards that all these experiences I had represent both good and evil parts of life, and I was reborn anew, a better person, a Freemason. And my journey is only starting. You'll see the wonders of the world, son. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's podcast. You can find Mr. Creepypasta Storytime on any kind of podcasting platform if you're watching on YouTube, and if you're listening to the podcast already, you can find Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube. <laughs> For those of you that are interested in seeing me do more than just tell scary stories, you can also check me out at twitch.tv slash mrcreepypasta. During the weekdays around 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, I usually stream video games. And sometimes they're Resident Evil, and sometimes they're not. I'm also on Patreon. You can find a whole bunch of other people supporting on Patreon in the description down below, but there is a very, very special thank you to these people in particular. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Creepypasta Adam, Ken Lando Higuchi, Mazakin, Champinsky, The Red Oak Shield Virus, G Weevil 3, Diana Krause, Steven Van Huss, Chance Burton, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Barbara Maceo, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, S-Man, Kirisuba, Bad Honey, Someone You Love, Said The King 56, Somber Puppet, Wolfie Numbs, Shadow Morningstar, Sean Mills, Jesse Gonzalez, Mad Marstomp, Z Kearley, Cassie Core, Mr. Thud, and Patrick Schoolmeister. These guys are the real MVPs, and all of you who are listening are also the real MVPs. Stay safe, everyone, and sweet dreams. <laughs>